your side. February 24th, 1994. The Earth is in a race with global warming. And the Earth is losing. It's a battle for the hearts and minds of the public. Property, Property rights. rights! We are risking disruptions in the climate balance more severe than any in the past 10,000 years. So I can produce as many scientists who say that there is not global warming as they can produce scientists who say there is. It's a battle some say is being promoted by the Moonies, assisted by Lyndon LaRouche, and funded by the coal industry. But it's also being waged by the White House. Tonight, is science for sale? This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. A number of years ago, I ran into then-Senator Al Gore at LaGuardia Airport. We were both waiting to catch the shuttle down to Washington, had some time to kill, and so we sat down to grab a cup of coffee. Senator Gore used the occasion to sketch out on a napkin one of his chief ecological concerns, depletion of the ozone layer. Ever the environmental activist, Senator Gore was proposing a nightline program on the subject. He is the vice president now, of course, but he is still proposing. A few weeks ago, Mr. Gore called to draw our attention to some of the forces, political and economic, behind what he would regard as the anti-environmental movement. The vice president suggested that we might want to look into connections between scientists who scoff at the so-called greenhouse effect, for example, and the coal industry. There was also a connection, he said, to the Reverend Sun Myung Moon's group and with Lyndon LaRouche's organization. I told the vice president we'd do two things. We'd look into whatever his staff gave us and that if we did anything on the story, I would explain to you how it was that we came to be doing it in the first place. Fred Singer is one of the people that Al Gore is concerned about. What's puzzling is that there hasn't been any noticeable uh, warming of the climate that can be ascribed to the human caused increase in greenhouse gases. The scientists and the environmental community agree that climate change is the highest risk environmental problem the world faces today. But Fred Singer, who is a scientist, does not agree. 1993 was the year of the backlash about environmental hype and hoax. The quality papers, finally, that is the, the New York Times, the Washington Post, finally, had articles that questioned uh, some of the assumptions about environmental disasters and pointed out uh, for the first time that there were other views, that the scientific community was not in agreement on many of the issues, and that perhaps the policies were based on incomplete or shaky science. Documents which the vice president's people gave us suggest that Fred Singer has been receiving support from the Reverend Sun Myung Moon's Unification Church. And in a manner of speaking, that turns out to be true. Singer is on the executive advisory board of this magazine, The World and I, which is funded by the Unification Church International. Singer also confirmed that his organization, called the Science and Environmental Policy Project, received free office space for a year from a group funded by the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. We would love to have support from any source we can get, provided it doesn't influence our views, and it should not. In fact, though, the connection with the Unification Church may have been initiated by Fred Singer. That, at least, is what an officer of the Church's International Cultural Foundation told us, that Singer wanted support for a project on the environment that he has been a regular participant in church-sponsored science conferences, travel expenses and honoraria paid by the Unification Church, and that these conferences published three of Singer's books. In fairness, though, you should also know that until he retired four years ago, Fred Singer taught environmental sciences at the University of Virginia, that he was the deputy assistant administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency during the Nixon administration, and that from 1987 to 1989, Dr. Singer was chief scientist at the U.S. Department of Transportation. 
you can see where this is going. If you like Dr. Singer's views on the environment, you mention his more impressive credentials. If you don't, it's Fred Singer and the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Property I'm rights! Next. Property rights! The vice president's office also suggested that we look into the connection between Reverend Moon's organization and the so-called wise use movement. We intend to destroy the environmental movement once and for all by offering a better alternative, the wise use movement. Ron Arnold is a prominent figure in the movement, which is actually a loose amalgam of as many as 400 groups of miners, loggers, ranchers, and corporations like Exxon. We think that people really want man and nature to live together in productive harmony and not to be subservient to nature or some, somebody's idea of nature. Ron Arnold was also the president of the Washington State Chapter of the American Freedom Coalition, a political organization that has, in the past, received substantial funding from the Reverend Sun Myung Moon. This is not, you should understand, a close call. It's not as though U.S. scientists are evenly divided, or even close to being evenly divided, on issues like the greenhouse effect or depletion of the ozone layer. But environmentalists are worried about even the appearance of a scientific dispute. If they can get the public to believe that ozone wasn't worth acting on, that they were led in the wrong direction by scientists, then there's no reason for the public to believe anything about any environmental issue. There is no scientific evidence to indicate that the ozone layer has either increased or decreased over the past 20 to 30 years. Roger Maduro is an associate editor of the magazine 21st Century Science and Technology. Does he know what he's talking about? Well, Dixie Lee Ray thought so. She died not too long ago, but she used to be the governor of Washington State, and before that, she was the head of the Atomic Energy Commission. She quoted often and admiringly from Maduro's book, The Holes in the Ozone Scare. Her views, in turn, are quoted often and admiringly by the popular Archdeacon of Conservatism himself, Rush Limbaugh. Dixie Lee Ray, when she was alive, wrote two tremendous books, and I relied on those greatly. I got to know her very well, and she was an amazingly sound and intelligent, very researched woman on her, on her area of expertise. You can see why Al Gore is getting concerned. Here's Rush Limbaugh with an audience of millions quoting Dixie Lee Ray, who was a woman of great achievement. And we've almost lost sight of Roger Maduro. He is not a scientist. He has a bachelor's degree in geology, and he writes about science. What Mr. Gore's staff wanted to be sure that we knew was that there is an association between Maduro and Lyndon LaRouche, a former presidential candidate whose bizarre views are legendary. Maduro's magazine, 21st Century Technology and Science, used to be called Fusion. That was before Lyndon LaRouche, who founded the magazine, was sent to prison for fraud and conspiracy. There is a connection. It's the same, uh, the, the managing editor, March Hecht, and uh, it's, it's the same people that put out Fusion magazine, put out 21st Century. That's, that's the connection. You may have seen copies of 21st Century being sold at airports by supporters of Lyndon LaRouche. Does that give you pause? Well, maybe it should. But does it also mean that the anti-environmentalists are always wrong and the environmentalists are always right? No, it doesn't mean that either. That story, when we come back. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Intel. Imagine a processor that's not just about more power. It's about an entirely new kind of PC. One that responds instantly to whatever you ask of it. One that breathes new life, a new spark into all your software. That's the power of the Pentium processor. From Intel, the computer inside. We designed a new car. We created a new class. We developed new engineering. We created a new standard of performance. We redefined value. Introducing the Mercedes-Benz C-Class. It wasn't designed to compete with other cars. 
it was designed to replace them. The new C-Class starting at under $30,000. Frightening new statistics show that teen drug use is on the rise again. We'll show you what to watch out for. Join us for this special edition. 2020, Friday. This week at Just for Feet, get massive overstock savings. 50% off Adidas, Reebok, Nike, and Asics clothing. Get massive savings at the world's largest athletic shoe store. 50% off. Name brand warm-ups, nylon jackets and pants starting from just $19.99. $19.99. This sale only good while stocks last. So hurry in now for best selection all at 50% off. Adidas, Reebok, Nike, and Asics clothing, 50% off. Just for Feet, where your 13th beer is free. At Bell Ford, buying a car or truck is as easy as buying a new sweater. Want to find the price? Just look on the tag. Same's true at Bell Ford. They put the price of every car and truck right on the windshield, so you can see exactly what you're paying, with no haggling, no hassling, no negotiations. So why don't other car dealers post their prices on every windshield? Guess they like pulling the wool over your eyes. Bell Ford. One low price, no high pressure. On September 18th of 1992, then-Senator Al Gore testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee on the potential consequences of the greenhouse effect. By overloading the atmosphere with carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, we are risking disruptions in the climate balance more severe than any in the past 10,000 years. The planet has not warmed up nearly as much as the computer forecasts that are used for the basis of this gloom and doom scenario suggest that they should have. Patrick Michaels is associate professor of environmental sciences at the University of Virginia. The polar regions should be so warm now as a result of the enhancement of the greenhouse effect that we wouldn't even be talking here. It would be obvious. That's the region where the most warming was supposed to occur. There isn't any. I can produce as many scientists who say that there is not global warming as they can produce scientists who say there is. Pat Michaels, University of Virginia, is one that I rely on. Professor Michaels is also editor of the World Climate Review, which is funded by the Western Fuels Association, a consortium of coal utilities. Whether or not Western Fuels funds the review has nothing to do with what was published long before they funded it. On the other hand, you wouldn't expect the folks at Western Fuels to be too upset if the scientists they're funding were to conclude that far from causing global warming, emissions of CO2, one of the so-called greenhouse gases, is actually good for the environment. A doubling of the CO2 content of the atmosphere will produce a tremendous greening of planet Earth. A better world, a more productive world. For citrus, it would be a very, very positive thing. Our world will be a much better one. In terms of plant growth, it's, it's nothing but beneficial. In very general terms, you should see a real greening of the desert. You should see uh, grasses and, and small shrubs moving out onto areas where they could not live and survive and reproduce before. Dr. Sherwood Idso, who did much of the work on that video, is, believe it or not, a scientist for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Just uh, for the record, uh, your uh, film, which has been uh, widely circulated by the coal industry and by OPEC, uh, was financed by the coal industry, is that correct? It was. And it was made by a company which you established on the side, is that correct? It was, it was uh, helped be made by a company which I established on the side, but which I haven't been uh, associated with for about a year now. I see. Who's, who's the head of that company for the My record? wife. The video cost approximately a quarter of a million dollars. Idso also wrote a book, Carbon Dioxide and Global Change, Earth in Transition. Western Fuels bought nearly a thousand copies of the book to distribute. But what do we have here? Is this a case of industry supporting scientists who happen to hold sympathetic views, or scientists adapting their views to accommodate industry? Remember Dr. Fred Singer? He has received consulting fees from Exxon, Shell, Arco, Unical, and Sun. No one has ever accused me of being a mouthpiece, mouthpiece for industry or a shell. 
But if that were to happen, I would simply point to the fact that every environmental organization I know of gets money from Exxon, Shell, Arco, uh, Dow Chemical, and so on. And that shouldn't taint your science. If it doesn't taint their science, it doesn't taint my science. It's the war between what you think should happen and what is happening, if you will. It's the war between the dynamic and the empirical, between the forecast and the fact. Richard Lindzen, a professor at MIT, agrees. He argues that computer models of what might happen as the result of increased greenhouse gases, that those models are, at best, imperfect. What we need is a public that is mature enough to accept that, you know, there can be this prediction, it's probably wrong. You're going to have to wait until you're surer. Because if you act in response to that, your action is probably going to be irrelevant to the problem. And so it's going to be action just for its own sake. Which brings us to some predictions that were made not so long ago. Remember the oil fires in Kuwait? Early in the war, the Iraqis began setting oil wells on fire, and we turned to two U.S. scientists to get their projection on what might happen if all the oil fields were set ablaze. One of those scientists was Dr. Fred Singer. That the smoke would only go to an altitude of about 3,000 feet, which means, according to the National Academy calculations, that the smoke would rain out after about three to five days. Assuming, so the lifetime as, of the smoke is quite limited. Assuming, of course, that the fires are put out. But let us say that the no, fires... No, no. No? No, no. Assuming that the fires continue, uh, the smoke would only rise to a very low altitude and therefore would have a limited lifetime in the atmosphere. The atmosphere cleans itself after about three or four days by rain. Taking a far more pessimistic view on the same program was Dr. Carl Sagan. We now know from uh, the uh, nuclear winter uh, investigation of the problem that black sooty smoke heated by the sun heats the surrounding air. The air, hot air, rises carrying the entrained soot to much higher altitudes. The record shows that in this instance Dr. Sagan was wrong and Dr. Singer was right. Predictions are a hazardous business. More on that when we come back. We're back with an AquaTread for performance sedans. Introducing the new Eagle AquaTread. Two aqua channels move water away for outstanding wet traction and performance. The new Eagle AquaTread, only from Goodyear. Man, when I get a cold, I'm not taking a four-hour pill like Sudafed. I take contact. Four-hour pills release our medicine all at once. Time release contact gives you microdoses every minute for 12 hours. It'll take you through the whole day. Contact helps turn sick days into work days. So, what are we doing today? I'd like to go buy some flowers. Oh, I know a place we can go buy some flowers. Great. Then maybe the theater to catch something? Yeah, catch something. Only Ford Explorer combines the luxury of more space with the ruggedness of four-wheel drive. And then I thought a nice candlelight dinner. Yeah, candlelight dinner. Ford Explorer. The world's just too big to be left unexplored. Next time, how financial dealings here in Hong Kong affect businesses back in the States. Plus, buying a custom-made suit and the ancient art of Tai Chi. On Good Morning America from Hong Kong next time. If you're in the market for a new home, here's your chance to save thousands. Come to the Universal Housing Home Show at the Nashville Convention Center this Thursday through Sunday. See the new looks for 94 and enter to win a big screen TV. You can own your own home. Just $100 gets you started, so you can take advantage of the lowest interest rates ever. Stop by the Nashville Convention Center this Thursday through Sunday for the Universal Housing Home Show. Universal, Tennessee's largest independent dealer, featuring Fleetwood Homes. It consumes your every waking moment. After all, this is an irresistible combination. It's a cheese lover's dream. With shredded cheddar cheese, sliced Swiss, and a Parmesan cheese sauce. It's Arby's $1.99 Triple Cheese Melt Sub, a cheese lover's dream. Three cheeses smothering Arby's roast beef on a freshly toasted sub roll. You're completely powerless. Enjoy the Triple Cheese Melt Sub, only $1.99 and only at Arby's. 
At $19,995, Buick's value priceless Sabre includes more luxury and performance features than we can show you. But some features we just had to show you, like driver and passenger airbags, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, 3,800 V6 engine, passkey anti-theft system, even six-way power seat. Luxury, performance, safety, and unbeatable value. It's what you expect from Buick. It's what you deserve. Buick, the symbol for quality. Almost a year after the Iraqi troops set those oil wells on fire in Kuwait, some of the scientists who had predicted environmental disaster got together in San Francisco and examined what went wrong, or from an environmental point of view, what had gone right. The fires, it turned out, were better furnaces than expected. They burned the oil and natural gas so efficiently that nearly 50 times less soot rose into the air than computer models had predicted. That's one of the problems with computer models, of course. They are imperfect. To project what the effect of greenhouse gases will be far off into the future, supercomputers are used to create a model of the environment all over the world, all the time, hundreds of years from now, taking into account as many variables as scientists like Jerry Malman can devise. The models admit to being imperfect because they're trying to do something that's extraordinarily difficult. That is to mimic this very complex mother nature we call Earth and its atmosphere ocean system. At present, uh, models are giving you rain where there are deserts, deserts where there's rain. Uh, the temperature of the Earth has to be put in, can't calculate it. I mean, there are plenty of big weaknesses. If you wish to trash the models, what you really are saying is that you want to throw away the classical interaction between theory and observation because models are the only way to check that. And the Earth is not a laboratory you can run over under controlled experimental conditions. Basically, the mathematical model gives one a way to check what's going on. So obviously, the atmosphere, the real atmosphere, doesn't pay any attention to these people who do mathematical models. And I think it's time for the people who do mathematical models to start paying attention to the real atmosphere. That's the way it should work. In other words, <laughs> it's the atmosphere that's more important than the models. Professor Steve Schneider at Stanford University has spent much of his life studying the climate using computer models. There's simply no other crystal ball that we have to forecast the future. Here's our crystal ball. It's very cloudy. The tough problem is how long do you clean the glass before you act on what you think you see inside? The important thing that seems to be getting lost these days is the examination of data with an open mind. Depending on what you've been conditioned to believe, you can come to the wrong conclusion consulting a supercomputer or the atmosphere. It's still hot and it's still dry in the nation's drought-stricken farm belt. It wasn't even noon today when the temperature at Sioux Falls in South Dakota was over 100. Is this summer's terrible heat just temporary, freakish weather? Or is there a change in the atmosphere caused by our pollution? The first signs of that greenhouse effect that scientists have warned us about. That was back in the summer of 88, when an unusual heat wave seemed to foreshadow the arrival of the greenhouse effect. But what are we going to conclude now? That the winter of 94 has been colder than usual. What concerns me, and in a very general sense, is not only that pol the politics or the policies can get ahead of the science, but that the policies become, as it were, cast in concrete. So that if the science changes, and science often does change, the policy simply marches on. What they've done is try to take scientific understanding and put it on the same level with political opinion. After all, if scientific understanding is the same as political opinion, then everybody's opinion is equally valid. There are no facts. And if there are no facts, there is no uh, vo extra validity to acting on environmental problems than not acting. That's why the stakes are so enormous. The implication is that we will pay for the sins of industrialized society sooner or later. But should we start imposing costly changes on our way of life to deal with a threat that has not yet totally revealed itself? The suggestion is that if we don't, 
and the planet warms to the degree that some scientists predict, we will wish that we had. Virtually everybody agrees that if we keep doing what we're doing right now for a long period of time, that bad things may happen. But we're pretty vague about what those bad things are and if or when they will happen. Richard Lindzen, though, argues that the solution is possibly worse than the problem and more likely to occur. We would have to virtually, you know, the usual statement is cut emissions, not to 1990 levels, but to, you know, somewhere between 40 and 70 percent below 1990 levels. And there's no one who's ever figured out how you could do that uh, without, uh, you know, virtually demolishing society as we know it. There is some irony in the fact that Vice President Gore, one of the most scientifically literate men to sit in the White House in this century, that he is resorting to political means to achieve what should ultimately be resolved on a purely scientific basis. I'll have a closing thought on that in a moment. Last year, American business wasted more than a billion dollars using the wrong long-distance company. Now there's a way to get that money back. Introducing MCI's billion dollar stimulus plan for American business. Get all the savings from MCI, plus we'll send you a check that doubles your savings every time you get a proof positive statement this year. Call us and put your money where it belongs. Back in your business. generation of clean gasoline. Where has it come from? It's come from a company technologically advanced, trusted for developing the highest quality gasolines for your car. From people who believe it's possible to clean more vital engine parts for lower emissions and a cleaner environment. For the highest performance and the best mileage, look for the new generation of clean gasoline. Where has it come from? It's come from a star. One, it's my job to set the tone for this company. Two, to me that means being direct, being truthful. We call that straight talk. Three, straight talk means being on the phone when there's news, good or bad. Four, I'm straight with people and I expect the same from our brokers to my kids. Five, time is money. Thank you for your time. Saturday. Just one more thing. Winning the lottery could cost you plenty. It was murder. Who's he supposed to be? You're certainly unique. Lieutenant Columbo, I'm with the LAPD. Rip Torn joins Peter Falk in Columbo, Death Hits the Jackpot. Then on an all-new commish. Do I actually have to kill a hostage before you realize I'm not a fool? Tony takes on the feds when Rachel's life's at stake. This is a federal case. He's got my wife, and that makes this my jurisdiction. The commish, after Columbo, Saturday. The issues of global warming and ozone depletion are undeniably important. The future of mankind may depend on how this generation deals with them. But the issues have to be debated and settled on scientific grounds, not politics. There is nothing new about major institutions seeking to influence science to their own ends. The church did it, ruling families have done it, the communists did it, and so have others in the name of anti-communism but it has always been a corrupting influence, and it always will be. The measure of good science is neither the politics of the scientist nor the people with whom the scientist associates. It is the immersion of hypotheses into the acid of truth. That's the hard way to do it, but it's the only way that works. That's our report for tonight. I'm Ted Koppel in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. If you wish a video cassette version of Nightline, the cost is $14.98 plus $3.95 shipping and handling. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source.